Hello and welcome. My name is Jo Bloodworth and I'm a designer maker and teach fashion and textile skills. I'm really pleased to be doing this for The Hive. The Hive is a Shropshire based creative arts organisation providing opportunities for young people to explore and build on creative skills. I'm really proud to be on The Hive's creative board with a team of super talented artists, musicians and designers. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a nice simple cushion cover in an envelope style. I absolutely love fabric. Uh, I seek out quirky colourful printed fabrics as you can see here, just a small selection, um, and I turn them into cushions. I love playing with colours and themes and I hope you can find some really bold fabrics to transform into a cushion cover yourself. What you'll need is a good pair of fabric scissors, You'll need some pins. You'll need a tape measure. You'll also have to choose a thread. Now the thread should really match your fabric. You might want to go for a contrasting thread, but I think for your first cushion cover, try and match up with the fabric you're going to choose. Some chalk, Taylor's chalk um, is great, but you can also use a pencil as well, as it's not something that's really going to be seen. It's just to help you when you do your measurements. You'll also need to find a fibre pad. You can buy these online in most kind of haberdashery and fabric stores. So have a look online or you might have some old cushions um, at home that want, you want recovering. So work with what you've got. Finally, and most importantly, your chosen fabric. I've decided to make a cushion cover today out of one of my absolute favourite fabrics, which is the cactus fabric you can see here. This is my chosen fabric, the cacti fabric. It's one metre fifty in width. I've got this folded over currently. I know that out of that one metre fifty, I could actually get three cushion covers, as my cushions uh, will be 40 centimetres square. One of the best ways to cut your fabric and make sure it's straight is to actually use a selvage edge to start. The selvage edge is the edge of the fabric as it's been put on the machine um, when it's been woven. So what we'll essentially do is measure across to the correct measurement and I mark it on the underside of the fabric all the way along um, for the one meter 20 drop. Now, if I want my cushion to be 40 centimeters wide, I then need to add a centimetre seam allowance either side. So that works out that my fabric will be cut to 42 centimetres. I use chalk or pencil to mark the measurement on the underside of the fabric and then cut it out. I've now cut my fabric and I've got one metre 20 drop by 42 centimetres across. A little tip that's going to keep everything accurate is to just make sure that the top of your fabric is at a 90 degree angle to the length. I often find if I haven't got a set square I will use a piece of A4 paper. Just lay it against the length and just make sure that that does actually um, meet a nice right angle. So once I'm happy that this is all nice and straight I need to now pin the top um, of this. Now the top of the fabric, which is where the print is kind of running up, will actually become the overlap on the underside of your cushion and look something like this. So what I need to do first on the sewing machine is actually pin this fabric. Um, I like to leave a three centimetre fold over. So you can obviously measure this out. I kind of pre-measured it and what I'm going to do is take my pins and I'm going to pin this down every so often. I've already kind of ironed this in place so I know that that is three centimetres. So you can see I'm just pinning through to hold it in place for when I take it to the sewing machine. Okay, I've threaded my machine up using the colour to match my fabric. I've gone for the grey to match the fabric here. So the, the next thing I'm going to do is sew the end of the fabric, which is what I've just pinned. I've got a nice 
a reasonably wide straight stitch. So most machines have a good straight stitch and a good zigzag stitch. So don't worry if your machine isn't a, a fancy one. So I'm going to pop the fabric underneath near the end, make sure that the thread is just hanging at the back. And I've actually on my machine got some guidelines here, which will just help me to keep the fabric straight and sew it to um, where I want it to be sewn. So I've put the foot down and I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to do a little back stitch, which kind of seals it. And as I go, I'm going to remove the pins. So the line I'm actually watching is this line here as I'm sewing, just to make sure it's straight, rather than this edge here. So I'm just going to keep sewing until I get near the next pin. Remove it. And keep going. I'm approaching the next pin, so I'll remove that. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to get back again, remove and cut. So I've got a nice straight edge sewn and finished. So that's going to be the outer layer of my overlap. That's what you're going to see, the first panel you're going to see on the cushion. Okay, now I've sewn the top of my cushion cover. The next thing to do is to start building the cushion. Um, it's all in one long piece. So what we need to do is fold the top over to create the overlap. So I'm folding the two printed sides of the fabric together and I want my overlap to be about three quarters of the 40 centimeter square down. So that would be about 30 centimeters measured down for the overlap. So if I just measure up 30 centimeters, look at that almost perfect. <laughs> so what I will do is just measure 30 centimetres, pop a pin in position. So I know that that side there now measures 30 centimetres. I'm just going to do the same to the other side. I now know that that is completely even. The next thing I want to do is measure 40 centimetres down. So that's my 40 centimetre mark. So for now, I'm just going to pop a little pin in here, which will just remind me that that is 40 centimetres. And I'm going to do the very same the other side. So all the time, I'm just making sure that it's nice and accurate with the measurements. Now I've got those pins in place, I'm going to fold the fabric this way making sure that I pinch it and fold it from that point. I now know that this all measures up underneath. So what I'm going to do is without moving the fabric, I'm gonna just take the pin out from underneath and pin it all together so I'm actually trapping it all in together. Do the same the other side. And remove these pins here, which I put in to take the measurements before. So now my fabric's folded and pinned in place. I know it's accurate. What I can tell is that I've got a little bit of excess here. So what I'm going to do now to get it so that the overlaps are equal, is I'm just going to pull this fabric down and cut it away to three centimetres from the top. So I'm just gonna check. So it's just getting your measurements right. So I'm actually going to do a little trick here where I put the scissors in between, hold my hand down as I go, now you can pin this if you like, um, so that you know that you're accurate, or you can do it by eye if you're feeling a bit brave. And we're going to do much the same as we did on the other side, where we're going to fold it over three centimetres. 
Again, make sure you measure this uh, if you like. So I'm just going to pin it in place and then it's ready to take to the sewing machine. Just to show you where we are with the cushion. So I'm now ready to bring the cushion cover back to the sewing machine again and I'm going to repeat the same stitch again uh, that I did with the overlap. So we're now stitching the underlap. So I'm going to take um, the foot and drop that down, make sure the threads are hanging at the back and using this as a guideline again to get the three centimetre measurement, I'm going to just start stitching, do a back stitch. So on my machine, I just click this button here. On industrial, it'd be on a foot pedal, but um, I'm sure many of you have got domestic machines. And I'm just going to remove the pins as I go, stitching in a nice straight line until I get to the next pin. And carry on. If it, if it very slightly goes a little bit uneven here, don't worry, as long as this line here is lining up the whole time, that's what you're going to see on the other side. So just stick with that. There we go, I've just backed up to finish it and I'm going to cut the thread away. The next part is to actually stitch down the sides. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to be working in part through some three or four uh, layers of fabric at once. But we're going to do a straight stitch down and if you remember it's a centimetre seam allowance either side. So I'm going to use my gauge on the machine here to do that to make sure that the cushion cover is completely square. So I really need to stick to that. So I've got a pin in either place, either side to hold it in place. So we're going to start again by stitching a few stitches forward and then back, which seals it. I'm using my guideline. When I get to the, un the overlap, which is trapped inside here, what I'm going to do as I approach it, I'm going to do that same back stitch to just reinforce it because that's the part of the cushion cover which will probably get the most... Um, stick really as when when you take your fiber fiber pad um fill the cushion and then take it out again and i'm just going to carry on about one centimeter until i get to the next which is the underlap so here we go i'm getting to the end again and i'm going to do a back stitch and then back again to the end back stitch and there we go so what I've now done is actually sealed that um, side seam of the cushion. I'm going to now do the exact same on the reverse. So just make sure your threads uh, are pulled back and everything is lined up. And I'm going to take this into the machine. So one centimetre seam allowance and we'll just repeat the same again. So I've done my back stitch. This time I'm hitting the underlap first. So just be a little bit careful here. Back stitch to reinforce it. And then I'm going to carry on. So I'm approaching the pin, which I'm going to remove. And I can just feel under here that I'm getting to the overlap. So let's do a nice back stitch to seal it. And a back stitch again. And that's it. Now, the only thing that's left to do now is to finish these edges. So I would really recommend if you haven't got an overlocker, which many people don't, um, obviously these frayed edges can wear over time, the threads can come away. And then particularly if you wash your cushion cover um, over time, it, it might kind of wear. So what I often do is use a zigzag stitch to just finish the edge. It keeps it really nice and clean and then your cushion cover is, is kind of ready to go. So I'm actually gonna move on my machine, find a good zigzag stitch and line that up. So just make sure again, your threads are pulled to the back, clamp it down. And I just work right on the very edge of the fabric here. 
and I'm going to do my zigzag stitch. Don't forget to back stitch again. And what that's doing is just securing the fabric. So it will stop it from fraying. Take it nice and slowly. Don't pull the fabric through. Just let the stitch be zigzag. Stitch, hold it in place. just done a zigzag back stitch then what I'll do is just cut off any loose bits of thread being careful not to cut any of the zigzagged thread and cut the ends threads off as well so what you can see now is that has actually sealed the edge of the inside of the cushion cover um, and that's going to really last you for a long time. So I'm just going to do the other side so you can watch this and repeat. So remember, start stitching, do a back stitch just to seal the end. And then I'm just going to continue laying that run through. Sealing the cut edge of the fabric making sure that it doesn't fray. Making sure that I hold it in place, but I'm not pulling it through. And we're getting to the end now, so a quick back stitch. And I can cut this free. Cut the final edges off. Okay, that's all the sewing we have to do. So essentially, it's just one, two, three, four straight lines and two lines of zigzag stitch to make your cushion. Okay, so here's the cushion cover that I finished sewing. It's inside out. I've just taken it to the iron to give it a bit of a press because it was quite creased. Uh, and now all that's left to do is to fill it with my fibre pad, which if you remember, I bought the fibre pad so it's a little bit bigger uh, than the cushion cover so that it's really nice and plump. So the first thing I'm going to do is get into these corners. So put my hand in the underlap and turn them inside out like so. And then I'm going to get my cushion inner and I'm actually going to push it in, making sure that I get the corners right into the corner. So you can see the beauty of doing a really nice, generous underlap and overlap, where we've done it kind of three quarters of the size. And then I'm gonna pull through the other two corners with the overlap. And if I just push right into the corner, you can see, that the cushion is now fully stuffed and finished and ready to go on my sofa. So now it's time for you to make your own cushions and fill your sofa with lots of fun. Good luck.